All right, my first topic is the Roland Gaia 2. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never known how to pronounce it. I always knew it was a dope little synthesizer, and it seemed like they took it to the next level, man. Um, the version 2, it's a little bit pricier than the last one. The last one was like, I think brand new. They were like $5.99. Well, obviously, everything is pricier now. This new joint is $8.99. So it's a little bit pricier, but it's 2023. Everything costs more money, man. Um, it's still a virtual analog. They didn't like add anything crazy. They just made it better in my opinion. Um, the guy it was, it, they added a few things that, that might make it like, okay, cool. There may be something I want to rock with because the old guy, it was dope, but it always felt like it was um like not as real. You know what I'm saying? Because of the virtual analog thing, those things don't age well in my opinion. So, um, the old guy, I never really bought. I had one briefly. I had it for a while, and I ended up selling it. But that's when I was getting into the analog, ballsy, crazy sounds, knock your face off stuff. So when I was first rocking with the Gaia, um, yeah, I, I, it was really just my cup of tea. But like since then, I've been into more. Of, like right now, I got an MS2000 virtual analog. Um, I, I keep a micron on me. So yeah. Now I'm more into the virtual analog and the ways to program them. So I'm, I'm digging it, man. It, it seems like they um, improved it. It's what? They got a two pole, a three pole, and a four pole filter on there. Um, low and band pass. So that's dope. There's some things you could do with that. Um, what else? The only thing they didn't make the keys velocity sensitive. They're not velocity sensitive again. I guess that would have cost more money, but like it's, it's $8.99. They could have made the keys velocity sensitive, man. It's, it's $300 MIDI controllers with velocity sensitive keys. So they could have made it, especially with it being virtual analog. Um, I like the little XY thing they got built in though. And I seen the video where you can record that, whatever you're doing on the XY to be in the synth sound. So I think Roland, like, I mean, not Roland, Korg took that to another level with these new um, wave states where people won't evolve in sounds and now we can do that right on the keyboard before like the wave state it was maybe a couple other keyboards that you can actually do it on the keyboard now it's as easy as just hitting record you're doing the motion holding the key doing the motion and now whenever you open that patch you save it and whenever you open that patch up you hit a chord it's going to automatically give you that motion that you created with the xy pad or whatever i don't think they call it the xy pad they call it something else but it's, it's an xy pad um, it's dope, man. Like I say, it's, it's, it's definitely worth the $8.99 in my opinion because everything is higher. That's $8.99 is like the equivalent of the $5.99 when they can't, that the guy won. And it was, that guy was worth that $5.99. So it just didn't have a place in my setup because I was, man, I got, I got some big boy toys. I got Voyager, um, Profit and things of that nature. So it just didn't it would be it'd be one of the cents standing on the wall if i bought the original gaia this new joint might get some um might get some play but i'm so used to the hydrocent i think it plays in that same lane as like the hydrocent because it's got that super digital super like analogy digital early 2000 sound in my opinion from what i've heard from it and just knowing from the gaias and i kind of cover that with my hydrocent so i won't be buying one but if you don't have something like a hydrocent, it's a little bit cheaper for the um, actual full size synth keys because the hydrocent explorer is a little bit cheaper than that. But if you're looking for the full size keys, you actually if you actually know how to play, because I want I could I could rock an explorer. <laughs> I don't know how to play nothing. I'm programming everything, so <laughs> that's why I don't even know why I'm complaining about the <laughs> velocity sensitive keys. You don't know how to play nothing. So yeah, the, it, it's let me re woo, rewind that. Forget that whole little section about the velocity sensor the keys. I'm not sitting up here playing for three minutes trying to get extra depth and feel by the keys being velocity sensitive. So that doesn't matter to me, to be honest. Um, it doesn't matter to my usage of it. It's just a feature that I'm used to just being on sense that costs more than six, seven hundred dollars. That's all. But um, yeah, Hydrosynth kind of nails that lane for me. I don't need it, but it's a dope synth, man. Like I say, from what I've heard, I want to hear one in person and play around with it. It may change my mind, because like 
$8.99 for, for a synth now is pretty cheap, man. That's like in the Argon 8 lane. And the Argon 8 is dope, but the Argon 8 has got too much weird, like, um, the menu dive and stuff that I hate it. So hopefully this Roland don't have a lot of, it's a Roland though, they don't do a lot of that. So hopefully everything is like there for you to just to play around with it and just keep moving around on the synth because that's what blew me about the Argon 8. Like honestly, if the Argon 8 had worked out, I might've never got a Hydra synth, but I'm glad I got the Hydra synth because the Hydra synth is probably like pound for pound the best thing in my setup, man. They came out, I wouldn't say around the same time, they got popular around the same time. And I ended up springing for the Argon 8 and I ended up selling it, man. And then a couple years later, I ended up buying another Argon 8 and it was like, nah, it's, it's still, it sounds good. It was never the problem if it sounded good. It's the way it felt when I was using it. And a Hydrosyn, you know everything, it's only three knobs on there, but like all those buttons, beep, I wanna go to straight to the, it ain't three knobs, but you know what I'm saying? I wanna go straight to the envelope, boop, there it goes. Let me play around with it. Even though the Argon 8 had it there, it was weird stuff like with the patches need to be gamed up and I'm like, bro, this is wild, this is weird. Like, this is weird. So I hope the, I'm pretty sure the, the rolling joint won't be like that because it's rolling. They're not going to like have all those weird little quirky things on it to make you not want to play it. It's be, my Argon 8 was sitting there for eight months and I probably used it three times because of just being aggravated about like loving the sound of it. Because like, like I said, because I love my analog sense, but I like that digitally sounding stuff too. That's why I keep a Korg on me. That's why I keep a like a Korg mini log or wave state or something like that on me. Because I like that digitally analog -y digital sound. I know that sounds crazy, but if you got one, you understand what I mean. And I believe it's the lane that Roland can be in, that Gaia, because that's what the old Gaia was in, in my opinion. So yeah, I, I give it a thumbs up, man. If, when I get a chance to get my hands on one, I'm definitely gonna try it out. Uh, hopefully I don't like it enough to buy it, because I got enough sense, man. I don't need any more.